Hi, I'm Bob with Top Choice Real Estate and the Living in Indiana team bringing you the word on the street talking Indiana real estate. Today we're turning the spotlight on the sleepy little town of Lebanon, Indiana. At one time it was best known as the home of actor Drew Powell, better known as the lovable house cut right on the famous Bonanza television show. But hey, flash forward a couple generations and wow, serious money is pouring in. This sleepy little town is starting to look like a sleeping giant. If you're looking for opportunity, this just might be the place. To get the full story, follow me now. Hey, Lebanon was founded in 1830. It's the county seat of Boone County, which features an iconic county courthouse. Hey, it's a perfect landmark for a downtown area that's just begging for redevelopment and this area will soon attract investors ready to fund those new shops and residential dwellings. Lebanon is a suburb of Indianapolis, which Zillow just named the fourth hottest housing market in the entire nation. Indianapolis is not only the state's largest city, but it's the state capital. It's 29 miles straight down uh, I-65 from uh, Lebanon to downtown Indianapolis. If you wanna go down there for an NFL game or an NBA game or some other cultural event. It's also just 36 miles southeast of Purdue University, a top engineering and STEM school. And that's really big from an employer's perspective, as is the fact that over 1 million people live within 60 miles. It's set alongside Interstate I-65, which is the main route from Chicago down through Indy, through Nashville, into the Southeast US. This stretch of I-65 is sometimes referred to as the Tech Corridor. In the past several years, the LEAP Innovation District has really taken off. Over 9,000 acres, 9,000 acres have been set aside and designed for commercial development. Eli Lilly, the pharmaceutical company that's ranked number 127 on the Fortune 500 list, has been leading the way. They've broken ground and have doubled their financial commitment just about every time you turn around. We're talking 12 buildings, we're talking a 600 acre campus, we're talking 1.6 million square feet under roof. We're talking over $9 billion to enhance production of key medications. We're talking over 700 highly skilled, highly paid jobs for the community. We're talking over 1,500 construction jobs just to build this one segment of this big park. And we're talking, I don't know how many add-on jobs like plumbers and electricians and, hey, realtors, okay? Everybody's gonna need to be involved to make this thing grow. And with over 50 leading biotech, pharmaceutical, and life science companies within 30 minutes, Lilly will not be alone in this development. So if you're considering moving here, you're gonna to wanna to pick up our relocation guide. It's free and there's no obligation. My staff and I have prepared the ultimate relocation guide and you can get your copy below. Okay, let's talk Lebanon. It's got a population that's estimated to be 17,431 people. The median household income is $75,442. Now that's on par with the state average and maybe about 10% below the national average. But the low cost of living, which is slightly above the state average, but below the national average, makes those household income dollars go all much, much further than in many, many places. Major employers include the school system, manufacturing, and distribution centers. You can look for employment opportunities to just absolutely explode in the years ahead. And speaking of schools, the Lebanon Community School System is rated B plus by niche.com. They're ranked number 47 out of 289 public school systems in the state, putting them in the top 20%. And get this, with Lilly comes grant money educational and community grants, and lots of them. The Lilly Foundation is the fourth largest charitable foundation in the entire United States, and they like to give their money locally. Think about that. So we're talking about community. I'd be remiss to mention that actually Haas Cartwright is not the town's most heralded son. In a basketball crazy state, that honor belongs to one Rick Mount. In fact, he was named the nation's top player, number one, as a senior at Lebanon High School. He was the first ever high school athlete from a team sport to grace the cover of Sports Illustrated. Now, he went on to become a three-time All-American at Purdue, where he set most major Big Ten scoring records and then played in the professional leagues. Hey, this is a housing channel, so let's talk housing. According to Rocket Homes, Lebanon's median house price in 2024 is 264,000. And unlike most of the rest of the country, that's up from 17% from a year ago, a 17% increase in just the last year. And homes are now selling faster in just 18 days this year, 
versus 38 days a year ago. The new commercial development is already having an impact and it's just getting started. 286 homes sold in the community in the past 12 months. They ranged everywhere from 76,500 to 2.6 million. That was a home set on a 57 acre track that included quality horse facilities. Okay, let's take a look at what the median price gets you in Lebanon, Indiana. Let's take a look at 2132 Cherry Park. It's completely updated, three bedroom, two and a half bath, two story. The updates include a kitchen with quartz countertops, new appliances, upgraded baths, roof mechanicals, and much more. With 2,082 square feet and built in 2001, it sold in just seven days for $260,000. Okay, if you have a home to sell in order to buy your next one, this next section is guaranteed to make you money. But if you don't have a home to sell, then feel free to skip ahead to the next house on today's tour. So if you're thinking about selling, have you ever wondered if you're gonna to have to paint or re-carpet? Or maybe your brother-in-law told you that you just have to fix up your bathroom. Hey, follow me. I'm gonna arm you with some knowledge so you can make the best decisions that will make you the most money. And I'll share secrets on how I sold my last five homes in a grand total of less than 30 days. Number one, you are now in the business of selling real estate. This is no longer about your house. It's time to focus on making it someone else's house. If you're going to get emotionally attached to a house, do it with the new home that you're about to buy. Number two, we use professional photography, which means to you, people will put eyeballs on your property. That plus our marketing will equal lots of interest. But so I hate to tell you that even with all that interest, people are gonna do their best to talk themselves out of walking through your home. It drives me nuts, but our job, your job, is to get them from the street to inside the house. Hey, they're gonna drive by and they're gonna do their best to talk each other out of walking through the house. So, curb appeal matters a lot, more than it should. Hey, if you think about it, you live 90% of your time inside your house, about 9% in the backyard on the deck or playing with the kids, and about 1% in the front yard. And that's usually when you're shoveling snow or mowing the grass, not doing something that's a whole lot of fun. But hey, you only get one chance to make a first impression. So you're gonna to wanna to be sure to trim the overhanging tree, put the trash cans out of sight, put the bikes and basketballs away, hey, and bring some color. Flower baskets in the summertime, maybe some mums in the fall, you got Christmas or Halloween, 4th of July, you got big bright flags. Put some color between the street and your house. Number three, say you do manage to get them to the front porch. There they are, the realtors fumbling with the lockbox, trying to get the key out. And what are the buyers doing? They're looking around. They're seeing the cobwebs and the dirt and the grime and the front door that hasn't been cleaned in God knows how long. So, hey, make sure that they're staring at something clean and sharp. First impressions matter. Hey, you may never use the front door. If you're like most people, you come in through the garage, but you're gonna bring everybody in for a showing through the front door. So, hey, paint the front door. Knock down the spider webs power wash the front porch. If you don't have the equipment or don't want to do it, I know a guy. Number four, once they're inside the front door, the priority begins in the front hallway and it works back from there. First impressions again. Hey, I've had people take one step inside a house and go, hey Bob, this one's just not for us. We're out of here. Hey, so the least important things to get done are the basement, the kid's bedroom, the garage. You can have all the boxes in the world in the garage and it doesn't matter. The side of the house, don't worry about power washing that. That's the, like the last thing that you do. What matters is everything as you move back through the house. That's what's most important. So concentrate your efforts beginning there. Number five, there's a saying and it's God awful true. Kitchens and baths sell houses. Now, the price point may play a role in what you do. A few years back, I was doing a listing presentation with somebody and it was a pretty nice house. I mean, it was kind of unique, but it, it was pressing a mill. And the guy just refused to consider putting granite countertops in. He said, well, the people will, they'll want to choose their own. Sorry, people looking at a million dollar home do not want to look at Formica countertops. So consider what price point you're at and then do the things that need to be done to sell it to somebody shopping at that price point. You wanna motivate them. It's not about you, it's about them. Make it attractive to them. Make them get their checkbook out. 
So you may want to consider, do the appliances match? Are they all working? Do all the burners work? Or is it obvious that there's something wrong with that kitchen range? Hey, it may not have bothered you. You may have lived with it for 10 years, but a buyer coming in, those are like trigger points for them as to say, well, maybe the house hasn't been taken care of, or it just doesn't give you that first impression. You may need to tile a bathroom or update some plumbing or electrical fixtures. Hey, it all depends. And when it comes time to show your house or have people walk through your house, you're gonna wanna remember this because yes, it's a pain in the donkey, but kitchens and baths sell houses. So take the time when people are walking through that those things look sharp. Number six, you're gonna to wanna to walk through your house and you're gonna to wanna to thin it out. You wanna look at your countertops and the, the, the tops of chests of drawers and bookcases and all those things and you wanna remove half of the items there. You wanna box them up, you wanna move them out, you wanna give it to Goodwill, you wanna haul it away. Then you wanna do half again. That's about what most of us have on our tops of our counters and our chests of drawers is way too much stuff for the person coming in looking to buy. Now, this doesn't cost you a whole lot, but it does take a little bit of time and effort. Now, I don't agree with realtors that say you need to depersonalize your house totally. I think you need to convey to people that the people living here like to live here. Buyers like that feeling. They can tell when they walk through a house and it's a divorce situation and the guy's sleeping on a bed on the floor. That doesn't help create a good feeling. So. Hey, you do what you can to make it feel warm. Even if you take out a lot of the personal stuff, leave enough so that they, they get a feeling that somebody enjoys living there. Hey, people even like seeing those uh, notes on the kitchen table or on a chalkboard that say, 10 things we love about living here. It's something you might wanna think about. Number seven, people ask me, should we get a pre-listing inspection? That way we could repair everything in advance. And I go, no. Hey, here's what inspectors do. They come into your place and they write for three hours. That's how they justify their fee. They're there for three hours. If you get a pre-listing inspection done and you repair 30 items, when the buyer's inspector comes in, he's gonna write for three hours. And you're gonna have this another list that's equally as long as the first one. Every house has a list and they're long. They go 50 and 100 items. And you know what? When you move out of your next house, you'll probably have that list too. Besides, you don't know how the buyer's gonna respond. You know, buyers have different comfort levels about different things. One guy may be an electrician. Another one, the wife's brother may be a plumber. They may not give a hoot about those problems, okay? So unless it's something just real glaring that's gonna get in the way of the sale, up front, somebody writing an offer, hey, let it go. We'll deal with it at the time of the inspection, okay? Number eight. Now, there are some problems that just must be taken care of. If you've got asbestos or mold or stained ceilings or pet odors and stains, those are deal killers. I mean, people don't wanna hear about asbestos, okay? It scares the living daylights out of them. If you know you got a, a situation there, take care of it before you put the house on the market. If you have black mold hanging off of something or other, get it taken care of before the people start walking through your house. Stained ceilings, people go, oh, I don't wanna have to paint that ceiling. Hey, let me tell you, people walk through a house and it's one of the things that lots of people know and the guy will look at that stained ceiling and he'll point it out to the wife and then they'll walk through the house and he'll come back and he'll point out that stain in the ceiling. Now, you may have put a new roof on your house in the last year and it's not a problem or fixed the toilet five years ago but never painted the ceiling. But it's a problem to that buyer and you lose the buyer because you didn't get out a can of kills, paint it, and then paint the ceiling. And if you don't wanna paint the whole ceiling, hey, I know a guy. Not to solve these problems will cost you more than the repair work. Number nine, carpets. Hey, if they're dirty, clean them. If they have wrinkles in them, get them stretched. If they're just beyond use, replace them. And I know a guy for any of those jobs or for laminate or hardwoods as well. And your price point may dictate just what you need to do or want to do or have to do, okay? But again, first impressions. Number 10, paint hides a lot of blemishes. And this is especially true if you have a vacant house because when you move all your furniture away from the wall and take the paintings off the wall, there's gonna be these marks. And so the paint needs to be touched up or the room needs to be repainted. It's a cheap fix and it goes a long way 
to getting your house sold. And not just sold, but sold for the most money. Number 11. Hey, you do whatever it takes to get the house ready to sell and you got all life going on and the kids have got ball games and you know, all of these things and you're tired, but guess what? The house needs to be clean. And I mean really cleaned. It needs to kind of shine. So hey, clean it or have it cleaned. And yeah, I know a guy. Okay, number 12, almost done. Remove the screens if you can. It will make the amount of light coming into your house that much greater, which people love, okay? If you have, uh, if you live with your curtains closed, open them. Again, you're in the business of selling this property. It's not about you anymore. It's about the potential buyer getting their checkbook out. So, hey, have the windows washed. Brighten the place up. Clean windows just shine. Okay, and hey, I know a guy. Number 13, let's talk about staging. It's not something that a lot of people consider, but hey, cold vacant houses do not sell very well. And this may be a price point thing, but I view staging everywhere from about, I don't know, 250,000 on up. So, you know, that's not like major, major price point in today's market. Staging, professional staging can really make a difference in getting the most money for a house, selling it in the quickest time and with the least hassle. Every time I sell my own house, I put myself through this exact same exercise. I'm convinced it's why I've sold my last five houses on average in less than six days. And no, I didn't give them away, rest assured. Hey, on the first one over in Glendale, I'd been working on the house and I'd gotten it all fixed up and it was late on a Saturday afternoon and I loaded up all my tools and I had a pickup truck was just loaded with stuff and I'm pulling out of the driveway and the last thing I do is I stop and I get out and I put the for sale sign in the front of the house and, the, and an open house sign. And this truck comes pulling up and the guy jumps out and he says, he's like dialing the phone and he says, hey, hey, can, can my wife and I look at your house? And I, I'm like, man, I'm beat, I'm going home. And I, he, he says, no, we really, my wife's gonna want this house. I, you know, sure, sure, sure thing. And we keep talking a little bit. I said, okay, I'll tell you what. He couldn't get a hold of his wife. And I said, I'll, I'll tell you what, I've got an open house tomorrow morning at nine o'clock and I will be here at eight o'clock. And, and if you wanna get a look before everybody else does, be here at eight o'clock. So the next morning, I'm there at about 10 to eight and the guy's already there. He's got his wife and he's got his realtor. And so I take him through the house and they say, give me a minute. And so they're out back uh, sitting at the uh, table on the deck and I'm getting ready for the open house. And so about 10, 15 minutes later, the realtor walks in and says, hey, can we have a minute? And so I go out and hey, you know what? 15 minutes later, we had a signed agreement for a full list price plus the realtor's commission. That's what you call a quick sale. So, hey, I pulled the open house sign and I went home. The second house, hey, I sold that one at the end of the first day. The third house was up in the mountains in Colorado and that one was an outlier. It took all of three weeks to sell. Number four, I sold on the Monday following the first weekend. And the fifth one, I sold on Tuesday after the first weekend. Hey, I hope you found this helpful and that it will help you sell your house in six days or less. Hey, we offer a free room by room analysis. I'll walk through the house with you. We can share ideas back and forth. It's free, there's no cost, there's no obligation. And I guarantee you, I'll help you make money and I'll help you save money by not doing things that you don't need to. Hey, to schedule a time, call or text me. Make it a great day now. With new jobs coming on the line and not enough housing for all the new people, we're gonna see lots of new construction. And if we look over the last year, new construction homes sold between $292,000 and $428,000. The median was right at $351,000. So let's take a look at what the median price home, new construction wise, has to offer in Lebanon, Indiana. We're looking at 1005 Cyprian Way. This is a four bedroom, two and a half bath, two story with 2259 square feet. It's built by Fisher Homes in the Cedar Ridge community. It features a stunning kitchen with an island, upgraded cabinetry and quartz countertops. The master bedroom ensuite sports double vanities, a garden tub, a separate shower, private commode room, and a walk-in closet. This recently sold for $359.9. With Lily's impact, there will be more homes built at the higher end. So let's take a look at 1013 Cyprian Way. 
this four bedroom, two and a half bath, two story with 2,825 square feet, also built by Fisher Homes. Hey, it's got an open concept with an island kitchen, updated cabinetry with 42 inch uppers and soft close hinges and drawers. This one sold for 413,000. Now think about it and compare that to what you get for that dollar in other communities. There's a huge investment being made in Lebanon, Indiana, right now and in the years ahead. It's led by Fortune number 127 company, Eli Lilly, and with $9 billion investment and counting, you're looking at a huge boost in local high-paying jobs. Plus, there's a downtown that's just right for redevelopment into you know, a walkable downtown center. So if you're looking for a growth opportunity in its infancy, you might want to check out Lebanon, Indiana. It's certainly worthy of your time. Hey, if I can be of service, don't be shy. Email, text, or give me a call. I'll be glad to help you with the success of your next real estate transaction. Coming up is my latest monthly market update with actionable data to fuel your real estate success. The numbers are in for June, and in the 16-county central Indiana marketplace surrounding the city of Indianapolis, the medium home prices are up 7% from a year ago and sitting at $320,000. Homes are selling in nine days, as opposed to seven days a year ago. And they're selling at an average discount of 1% below the list price from a year ago. So hey, note to self, don't think you're gonna bid 10% off the list price and get the property. This ain't 2008. Now, sales are down 12% and that's pushing inventory up 21% to 4,262 homes for sale in central Indiana. But that's only a 1.6 month supply and a balanced market ought to have six months. So as that old song says, we've got a long way to go to get there. In Hamilton County, prices are essentially flat, sitting with a median average price of $453,000. They're selling on average in six days, which is, hey, one day shorter than a year ago. They're also selling at a half a percent below asking price. So on a $453,000 home, what's that, uh, $22, $2,300? With sales slowing, inventory is growing, but there's still only 1.2 months supply. And again, that ought to be six months. On the street, this is what I'm seeing and hearing. Good houses in good locations, in good condition, are selling fast. And I might add, for top dollar. So wannabe sellers, get your home ready. This ain't 2021. And for buyers, come prepared. Get yourself pre-approved in advance. Not pre-qualified, pre-approved. If you don't know the difference and why, ask me. And have the lender make out the pre-approval letter for as much as you qualify for. There's two reasons why. Number one, if you see a house that you just really love and have to have, you'll be ready. Even if it's outside that budget that you had in mind and more than that letter, you'll be ready and you won't lose out. Because hey, you're not gonna have to be trying to find your lender at seven o'clock on a Saturday night. That's not a good strategy for success. Number two, many people don't want that letter to state one dollar more than what the asking price on the house is. They don't want the seller to think that they have $1 more that they can afford to spend on that house. But guess what? Think about what you're telling the seller. You're telling them that you're at the top of your ability to purchase. And given the choice, they're gonna look at other offers and they're gonna find one where there's a big gap between what somebody can afford and what they're buying. That will make the very little risk of that loan not closing. So if you really want to buy a certain house and not just practice writing offers, do these two things to increase your odds of being successful. Now, if I can be of service, hit me up in the comments below or call me directly. And hey, make it a great day now. If you're considering relocating to the greater Indianapolis area or moving anywhere within central Indiana, be sure to tune in every week to learn all there is to know about real estate and living in Indiana. Whether you're buying or selling, please keep in mind, I work harder to make good things happen. Hey, make it a great day now. And if you found this video helpful, be sure to watch this next clip right now.